everyone, welcome to a review of a 2017 Toyota Yaris Hybrid, this being the 1.5 design spec, so it's the middle of the range, not the top of the range, top of the range being the T-Spirit, but nonetheless, this being the 2017 to 2020 model has the revised front bumper, where you get a more pronounced nose and a lot more aggressive looking stance, I must say looks fantastic doesn't it nice aggressive looks and I love how the uh, um, detailing here the chrome then feeds into the light there to give like a frowny looking look there that just gives that little bit of aggression and a sporty look to what is otherwise uh, was a bubble shaped soft sort of character but this gives it a lot more aggressive look to it it's not the biggest uh, car in the world in terms of the super minis um, so inside the space isn't as big say as a Honda Jazz or a Polo but it's not meant to be that's not where they're aiming at they're aiming it more or less bang in the middle and they want it to be small enough so it's easy to park standard with these it's getting a bit low so I'll get the light on standard with these is the reverse camera you don't get unfortunately you don't get parking sensors as standard you have to get it as an optional extra and in this particular model you get these diamond cut alloy wheels that look quite fetching and I do like this ocean blue colour that they've got looks lovely doesn't it and uh, obviously continuing with the sporty theme you've got the nice tinted windows and you've got the flared out little additional basically they're stick on can you see they stick on little spoilers onto the door just to make it look a little bit more sporting um, you may have seen my review of the 2013 Yaris and you saw the Lexus style lights on the rear this goes for the more conservative standard lights so the only way of knowing it's a hybrid again is the blue surrounds to the Toyota badge and also obviously the big letters that say hybrid one of the downsides of having this hybrid model excuse the lighting is let me um right. My apologies for the poor lighting. But one of the downsides is, can you see this big plastic hump there? That's where the hybrid battery is. So you end up sitting quite high in the back. So if you're someone, I'm five foot six and I'm okay, just about, leg room isn't that great, it's a bit tight, as you can see. So you don't really want to be sitting in the back for too long and these backrests are very upright so it's not the most comfortable in the back here um, so it's a bit yeah disappointing and in this design spec you've got manual wind down windows so if you've got children they might be able to wind down the windows so do bear that in mind when you do look at these cars and in the back not much in creature for comforts, there's no little pockets, you just got this big hole there for a cup holder I think. Don't know how big the cup's going to be, it's huge there isn't it? But yeah, so that's the downside of having the hybrid. The seats are high and what it does do though is make sure that the boot space isn't compromised as it was in the previous model so you get a relatively good size boot and of course being a Toyota you get a five year warranty let's look at the inside so in the inside there's not much difference from the previous model so the 2013 model more or less look the same in the T-Spirit you do get the Touch 2 Go so you get sat nav included in this one you don't, it's just a standard um, unit and of course you've got keyless entry 
Okay, so I've switched off the uh, radio, so hopefully I don't get done for copyright infringement there. Anyway, you've got your radio, it's absolutely easy to use, you've got your car set up there, so you can see the energy monitor. And one of the good things about this is, not only do you get the USB there with the cigarette lighter and auxiliary, I believe. Yep, there's the auxiliary. So you can connect up your iPhone and whatnot, and your Android, but one of the key features I like is the safety gear. So you got lane departure warning and anti-collision. And these are like £3,000 options on BMWs. And they come as standard in the Toyota, so hats off to the Toyota group there. And again, standard unit here in the gearbox, reliable as anything, soft touch plastics here and then brittle everywhere else so very brittle plastics but as we know with these Toyotas they may be brittle plastics but they last uh, a long time and they're one of the most reliable cars around so the most reliable small car really and one thing to note these leather um, steering wheel is not actually leather it's leather coated so what you'll get is a little bit of le peel don't know if you can see that there you go so you get that it's a common issue on the Toyotas but yeah other than that nice little car the ride is very good with a 1.5 hybrid so it's uh, plenty strong enough and it will hold its own on the motorway so this is what happens when you walk away with the key it beeps to let you know you're leaving it alone but yeah so it's a highly reliable car strong enough to use both in town and on the motorway obviously it's most economic when you have it in start traffic but even on the motorway you should be able to average 45 miles per gallon while in town you're looking at nearer 60 miles per gallon or if you do short journeys you may well just be able to do it on electric power alone so right now the car hasn't turned off it's just switched to electric mode so the benefits of hybrid it does it for you you just drive let it do the thinking for you but yeah highly recommended one thing to note for UK customers is that from 2017 previous models of these Yaris hybrids were zero tax but from 2017 they became standard tax so you have to pay for this one 140 pound road fund license tax every single year whereas the 2013 14 15 and 16 models were zero road tax which seems a bit out of order but that's just how it is and the treasury need to make their money um just do bear that in mind it's probably why the uh, older models are that little bit more desirable and strong on the money because people are essentially going to save about £140 every year on tax alone but anyway would I recommend this car most definitely it looks lovely just bear in mind that the rear seats aren't the most comfortable in the world so if you really do need the rear seats and have more taller you know um, passengers or children then maybe go for the 1.5 normal uh, petrol um, without the hybrid and that has the standard seats that are a little bit lower down and have a better angle so it's a bit more comfortable for the passengers but in terms of a ride for the driver it's all good and highly recommended low running costs excellent top of the range reliability and what else can you ask lovely little city car highly recommended do like and subscribe and see you soon bye bye